previous lesson, we learned how to encode and embed a video into our page. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the JavaScript API for interacting with our videos, and we'll actually be creating our own custom controls for playback of our video. So back to the source here, we have our video tag, and what I want to do next is add a div to hold our controls. So we'll say div, and give it a class of controls. And inside this div, I'm going to add buttons for our controls. So we use an input with a type of button, and we'll name it play. And if we switch back to our player here, we'll see we have a play button. But it doesn't do anything yet. So switching back over to our JavaScript, which is empty, we're going to use jQuery to create a function that will get executed after our page loads. So we use the dollar sign and pass it a function. And everything inside this function will be loaded after the page is fully loaded. So we want to get grab our video. So we're going to get our video. We use jQuery to select the video elements on the page and grab the first one. And let's set up our play button. We're going to select it using jQuery because we gave it the ID of play. And we'll add a click listener. And when we click the button, we will say video dot play. And it's that easy. So let's go ahead and check it out in our browser. Refresh. Now if I click this play button, all right, we get to play. Now let's add a, another, let's add a pause button. So it's going to be the same thing. Add an input, a button, and we'll call it pause. And let's over, switch over to our JavaScript. And we'll do the same thing for our pause button. Grab pause. And then we can click play. And let's see if the pause button works. Yep, and then we can hit play again. And we can continue pausing and playing. Now, a lot of videos, you want to have a stop button, which will not only pause the video, but take you back to the beginning of the video. So let us add a stop button. Call it a button, stop, and we'll say stop. Now, in our JavaScript, we want to actually do something a little bit different, because there isn't a stop function, but we can create our own using our own JavaScript. Our stop button, we'll grab our stop button and give it a click handler. And we want to do two things. First, we want to stop the video from playing if it is. So we'll do video.pause. Because when we stop the video, even though when we take it to the beginning, we don't want it to continue playing, we want it to just stop and be at the first frame. So right after we pause it, we can say video.current time equals zero. The current time attribute, when you set to it, it automatically seeks the video to that time. And this right-hand side is in seconds. So if you're used to milliseconds with the timeout functions, you just have to remember to convert it over to seconds. And remember that videos work in seconds and timeouts work in milliseconds. So hopefully that should work. Let's take a look at our video. We have a new stop, our new stop button. So let's play. Let's skip forward a little bit and see if we stop. We've stopped, and now it's at the beginning of the video. Now we can do even more than just start and stop and pause the video. Let's do something like skipping back a couple seconds in the video. So let's create another button for this, and we'll call it skip back. Input button. And we'll call it skip back. And we'll say back two seconds. And now let's set up our skip back button. So we'll say skip back. We will grab our button. We will add a click listener. And here, all we want to do is subtract two seconds from the current time. So we can do that really easily by doing video.currentTime minus equals two. Switch back over here to our player, reload. So let's play our video. We can play it, let it go for a few seconds, and then use our skip back button. And we should be back a couple more seconds. So we're at five seconds, six seconds. 
And every time we go back, we'll just go back two more seconds. So using the current time in the play and the pause functionality, we can create a lot of cool functions for our video player. Now we've seen how to make some simple interactive elements for our video. In our next lesson, we will use some more advanced techniques to create a timeline and a playhead so we can interactively seek through our video.